You mentioned Malcolm. You mentioned Martin. Now, I know for a fact uh, that you encourage your players from all walks of life to read the autobiography of Malcolm X. What I want to know is, what is it in that book, in that narrative, in the story of Malcolm, what is it that you hope um, that your players or the people around you, your peer group, get out of this book? It's just How's it going to help their golf game? <laughs> it's, not aggr- it's not aggressiveness, is it? No, no. It's just the, it's the, it's the, sheer, it's the sheer wisdom that came from the struggle. Like the, the level that he got to in consciousness could not have come on the beach. He had to go through it to get to it. The constant evolution and re-evolution of a man who goes from, you know, a young man to a hustler in Harlem to going to jail. Getting his hair relaxed. You got, you got to remember that part. All, 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 <laughs> all, all, all that, all that, all that. And all the way up to the point that he's then the head speaker of the nation of Islam. And then he goes to Mecca and realizes he's been lied to mm-hmm. and now comes back. And look, as soon as as, as, as as soon as white people started going to his speeches, that was it. They ended him. So I it. think if I think if Malcolm had went on to grow to like 95 years of age, he probably would have been one of the most influential human beings ever. And so that that is it's a that's a story of hardship and growth. And look, everyone out here wants to be on top of the summit. Everyone wants to climb to the top of Mount Everest, but no one is willing to get frostbite. And you can't do one without the other at 29,000 hmm. feet. So. That's the Mm. thing. It's like, you know, I've said this before, you know, being married is hard. Being divorced is hard. Playing good is hard. Playing bad is hard. And you have a choice to choose your hard because it's going to be hard. And so I just feel like the overwhelming kind of thought process in this self-help world of the eight steps to happiness, the nine steps to enlightenment. That's not what it is. I mean, how is a book on happiness 400 pages? (laughs) <laughs> so I think I think we I think we get stuck and so to me happiness doesn't come from not having problems happiness comes from solving problems and the problem out here is so many of these guys were naturally so good at golf is that self esteem is low because a lot of the levels weren't earned mm. they weren't earned so I feel very competent in what I do um I have a lot of self belief and I know what my limits are because man you know what I had frostbite in every limb, you know? I had the hardest, hardest times, and I pushed through, and I pushed through, and the only two words that matter in life is just to show up. Just show up and wait. I mean, that's it. Like, I can wake up and be concerned about how the players are going to play and all that. I embrace that feeling, and as soon as I embrace it, then I move on. I'm not trying to repress it and be like, I don't feel like that, you know? I'm a man. I don't feel weakness. No, I sense the weakness. I embrace it, but I don't capitulate to it. Yeah. And, and you got all that from, from this autobiography of Malcolm X. Like I'm saying, when you read it and you want to impart these wisdoms to the folks, you got all of this from that book. Yeah, well, I, what I do is we go, you know, we go over what we go over what we learned about it. I mean, Mandela's long walk to freedom. I mean, dude, that guy sat in jail for over 25 years because of what he believed in. So do you think all these activists on social media are going to cause any change or influence? What, because they repost a post and say, that's how I feel? Like, I'm glad they're sharing it. But, hey, dude, nothing's going to change from your Twitter account. 